Okay, hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the ZOA Book Club. Um, we are very honored to be among all, your, all of our friends. Um, Charles just commented that he sees a lot of his friends and we're all friends here. Um, we're really honored to have Charles Jacobs and Avi Goldwasser today to discuss uh, their book, uh, Betrayal, The Failure of the American Jewish Leadership. I will try to hold it up, but it doesn't work that well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I did want to mention um, that we, oh, Charles has it right there, um, that I'm go we're gonna send an email to everybody as to when to buy it, because uh, there are some necessary edits in um, our art and the article written by Morton Klein. Um, which are being made. Um, so we will um, send an email to everybody on, on the Zoom uh, to buy it at that time after those, those are complete. But we didn't want to miss the chance to have uh, Charles and Avi uh, speak with us today. And um, without further ado, please go ahead. Okay, let me, uh, thank you. Thank you, Liz. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the book and why we're doing what we're doing. Um, you know, so there's a natural reticence among Jews in the center and on the right uh, to pick fights openly with other Jews. We are, after all, a besieged minority. Uh, uh, but we feel, I mean, and, and, and even people who understand uh, that the establishment Jewish leadership, and by that I mean uh, the ADL, the federations, the AJC, uh, most of the rabbinate in America, the JCRCs for sure. But that's what I mean by the established uh, Jewish leadership. The one exception is the Mort Klein ZOA. And we make that uh, very, very clear and every time we speak or in the book. Uh, Mort has a wonderful chapter in the book. So, so there, we feel that even though we also feel reticent about picking fights with Jews in public, that there's a moral obligation to tell the community the truth about this matter uh, that is their failure, because it is a key, um, it's, it's such a key item uh, related to our well-being as American Jews. And so um, the truth is that the organizations that are pledged to protect and defend us are failing to do so. We know it up close and personal because we've been fighting with them for decades and decades. Um, and so we gathered our people. Uh, some of them are prominent writers and thinkers like Mort Klein and Jonathan Tobit and Caroline Glick and Thane Rosenbaum, Richard Landis and others. Some of them are unsung uh, local heroes, activists. And all of these people know what we know uh, from their own perspectives and they tell their own stories and provide their own analyses uh of why and how our jewish leaders are failing to protect and defend us so the book is two parts the first is a collection of these analyses and the second is what you might say uh reports from the trenches the book has gotten enthusiastically reviewed um we got very strong blurbs from dennis prager ken levin gil troy leah Leibovitz. Uh, all of them prominent intellectuals, because they understand, and they said in their blurbs, nobody's talking about this big problem, that the Jews are being attacked on all fronts, and the, the leadership is failing, okay? So why we, why we did this? So Avi and I have been fighting the good fight uh, for decades. Uh, the good fight is uh, the fight against our external enemies of the Jewish people. The media, the professoriate, the campus administrators, uh, the left-wing anti-Zionists, then that would include the Jewish hypercritics of Israel, the Muslim radicals, Farrakhan, etc. And we, all of these, <coughs> all the people who we met through our lives are the wonderful people who have started up uh, grassroots groups to fight those enemies precisely because Jewish leadership was failing. I mean, you didn't really, you know, think about camera. I mean, what, why, why did we need camera if there was the ADL? If the ADL had done its job, which was to defend Jews against anti-Semitism, then we wouldn't have needed camera. But we did need camera and all of the groups. And of course, the one exception to the legacy groups that failed is Mort Klein's COA, who, which was from the very beginning and always is 
staunchly and bravely and courageously saying the truth about everything, including the failure of the other Jewish organizations. So we concluded after 30, 40 years of fighting uh, the good fight that the Jewish community may indeed not prevail against the, the tsunami of Jew hatred, which is surging at us from, from, uh, for, from every ideological camp, almost every ideological camp, uh, that without a change in Jewish establishment leadership, um, we may not prevail. So, uh, I, you know, so how have they, we'll get into uh, how they've betrayed us, uh, you know, blow by blow, et cetera. But let me turn it over to Avi a bit. So let him make some comments in the introduction. Avi. Yeah, I think uh, what we try to do is educate the public, uh, the Jewish community primarily about what's happening. Uh, and what's happening is not acknowledged by Jewish leadership. We are under assault. War has been declared against us, all right? And we need to recognize it. And we need to come up with strategies to fight it. And I think the major Jewish organizations, uh, ZOA and Mort are clearly an exception, uh, are reluctant to admit the situation. They prefer not to deal in the reality of what we face. And as Charles said, we're assaulted from multiple directions. And it's pretty serious. Right. And the longer we wait to confront it, the worse and the harder it is to uh, deal with it. So what we urge leaders is number one, speak the truth, declare this is an emergency, this is serious. We cannot continue with the same policies and strategies that have failed so far to stem the assault on the people. And part of the problem is that we have people in leadership position who quite, to, say, to speak quite frankly, are cowards. They're not willing, unlike Mort, to speak the truth and take the heat that goes whenever you speak the truth. They are very loyal to their progressive ideology and do not want to say anything that may put them sort of um, outside the uh, accepted range of opinions on the left. All right, we've had discussions with Jewish leaders in Boston for many years, over 20 years. And these are nice, decent people. I basically concluded they're delusional, they're utopian. They're not linked to the reality on the ground. And it's, it's hard to change their mind. They really believe that by pursuing sort of progressive ideology of fighting racism, welcoming immigrants, uh, supporting all the minorities from gays to trans, that will reduce hostility to Jews, despite the evidence to the contrary. And, you know, it takes some traumatic event for people to change their mind. And I think eventually they will. I think what Charles and I are trying to do is just accelerate the learning curve because it's costly to wait and it becomes harder and harder. And the purpose of the book is to raise awareness uh, in the community and with leadership that we're not on the right path, that unless we change, things will only get worse. Uh, and I think the essays in the book prevent, present a multidimensional view of the crisis. And yeah. um, I think it's important. Things are getting worse and we'll continue to do so unless we change our strategy on how to deal with it. Well, but, but let me just, let me just step in. I, I wanted to thank both of you for mentioning that Morton and ZOA, ZOA are an exception to the problems with Jewish leadership. And um, Mort really wanted to be here today, especially because he has a chapter in the book and would have loved to have said a few words if you want. Later, I could say a few words about it. But, um, or you, you're you welcome to fill everybody in about it. Um, I I did want to mention that Moore isn't here because he's on Newsmax right now uh, discussing the news that uh, uh, today about the meeting with uh, Netanyahu's meeting with Biden, which apparently, according to news reports, won't even be at the White House, um, will just be at the UN. I mean, insult after insult. And uh, according to some reports, uh, Israel, uh, 
agreed to a freeze or that Netanyahu agreed to a freeze of, of building, which is, if, if that's true, that's, that's a horror because Jews should be able to build wherever in the world they want, particularly in the Jewish homelands in Judea and Samaria. And uh, agreed that after uh, getting rid of the ridiculous reasonableness uh, uh, reason for <laughs> excuse for uh, violating the law, which the uh, Israeli Supreme Court has been using uh, continually, um, that they're not going to do anything more in judicial reform. And if 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 this is the case, it's you know if, the, if these reports are true, it, it's a disaster. And and. You know, Mort's speaking out about that right now on Newsmax, and I wonder how many other Jewish organizations are going to speak up against, uh, you know, restrictions on where Jews can live uh, in the Jewish homeland. And I think uh, you know the book spe really speaks to that. Right. Um, let me let me just say that uh, you know what it is shocking that here we live in a new time. The Jews are living in a completely new time in America. I mean, whoever would have thought that a uh, majority of our physical institutions need armed guards or need security. It wasn't that way when we grew up. So something happened. So what happened? Let me walk you back a little bit to see if I can trace out what happened. So we need to go back at the beginning because it was, it was at the beginning that the Jewish establishment got this whole thing wrong. What they did was they missed the new anti-Semitism, right? So as we know from Rabbi Sachs, uh, Zetzal. Anti-Semitism is a virus that morphs according to a certain pattern. Whatever is the biggest sin of any historical period, that's what the Jews are charged with. When religion reigned, we were Christ killers or rejectors of Muhammad. Um, when uh, when nationalism was the way that any every decent people expressed its values and its, its culture, the Jews were cursed as stateless cosmopolites. Uh, when race science dominated the discourse, Jews were seen as vermin and undermention. And now, when globalism is all the rage and nationalism is, is racism incarnate, the Jews are hated for our state. So there's a pattern to all this. And, and so what happened was, you know, after World War II, anti-Semitism in the West had a big problem. Uh, after the mass murder of Jews by Nazis, it was just not socially acceptable uh, for people to be anti-Semitic in that old way, right? Christ killer, secret cabals, greedy, cheap, money obsessed, goy hating. All of that was off limits to anybody who wanted to be accepted in a decent society. And so anti-Semitism needed a workaround, right? And that workaround was found in anti-Israelism. So if Israel, the biggest project of the Jewish people in the whole world could be tainted if Zionism itself could be tainted, that was a way to get at the Jews without quite being like Adolf Hitler. And that's what happened. And so when the media began to portray the Jewish state as among the world's cruelest of nations, right, needlessly oppressing indigenous, innocent, uh, darker skinned people, well, then anti-Semitism threaded the needle, it belled the cat, the problem of how to attack the Jews after the Holocaust was solved. And our leadership completely missed it. Uh, they allowed uh, people who defended this critical view of Israel to be uh, to say, well, it's merely criticism of the Israeli government policies. And, and our, our leaders let that stand. I remember when, uh, when we first uh, formed Camera, Mort was there. Uh, Mort was the Philadelphia, you know, pre the national camera. Mort was the Philly uh, camera guy. Uh, I was the Boston. Andrea Levin and I were the Boston people. Um, we were approached by people who said, you shouldn't form camera. You should let the ZOA do it. I mean, the ADL do it because the ADL speaks for all of America. And if Abe Foxman at the time would say, hey, the media is cheating again, lying about the Jews again, that would be a big thing. And if you guys did it, you know, it's easier to dismiss you as a kind of a right wing offshoot. Well, Foxman was asked by his own people in Boston, Lenny Zakem. Um, we have a Zakem bridge there. Lenny was the ADL guy in Boston. And Foxman said he didn't want to do it. He did not want to go after the media defamation of Israel, even though he's the anti-defamation league, uh, for all kinds of reasons. And I would tell you, if you're going to write the history of the 
decline of Jewish power in America, it came from that decision. Anyway, you talk about Boston. Avi and I have been in Boston, and we fought the uh, the professoriate in Boston, Northeastern uh, University. They were ripping down the menorahs. They were... And the Jewish Federation said, Shah, still, we'll take care of it behind the scenes. That's their MO. We'll take care of it behind the scenes. Uh, when the most radical mosque that you could ever imagine was built in Boston by, uh, on the board was the head of the Muslim Brotherhood, Yusuf Karadawi. We went, we called an, Avi and I called an emergency meeting of the Boston Jewish leadership. And at that meeting was the JCRC, the Feder the CJP, which is the Federation, the AJC, the JCR, all of them, rabbis, they all came. And we showed them documents about who these people at the mosque were. And we showed them how on the mosque website, it said how to, be how to beat your wife, right? How to beat your wife. We showed them checks that came into the mosque from terror organizations and vice versa. We showed them everything. And you know what their answer was? Dialogue. We have to dialogue with them. If, if we're nice to them, they'll be nice to us. You know, and 12 years later after that, uh, you know, 15 people from that mosque are in jail, dead, or on the on the on the run from police. Uh so so and the same thing happened with all the left-wing attacks on Judaism, uh, on on Zionism, even from within the Jewish community. Avi made a movie called the J Street Challenge. I'm sure many of you have seen it. it, it and, and we show that they, they pretended to be pro-Israel while stabbing Israel in the back. Um, we went to APAC. We said to APAC, look at our film. Uh, the head of APAC, actually. Uh, look at our film. J Street's going to eat your lunch. They're, no, 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 no. Spread the film, disseminate the film, tell people, you know, expose J Street. No, 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 no. So, you know, we're now at the, uh, I'm going to stop in a second. So we're now at the point where, again, if national Jewish leadership, if the, if the rabbis and if the JCRCs and if the ADL don't understand that they're trapped by their own ideology, they're trapped because they put all the eggs in one basket. We're going to be for the minorities and they'll be for us, right? We Jews are going to be for the blacks and the women and the gays and the trans and the Latinos and all of that. And, and of course, they're going to, it'll be reciprocal, right? Guess what? Liberalism lost to wokeism. The game board was flipped. And now those very same groups are the ones who are the most virulent anti-Israel groups. And, and our leaders know this. They know this and they have no strategy. They have no, they're trapped in a corner. They don't know how to get out of it. They don't know how to speak about it. They're flabbergasted, bewildered, and they're like uh, deer in the headlights. So something has got to shake this up. And that's what we're doing. Uh, one of the things that I've, and I'll, just one more thing. One of the things that Avi created, which I love, is, you know, it's hard to get Jews on the street unless you're a left-wing Jew, right? It's hard, it's hard to get centrist right-wing Jews to go picket, to go demonstrate, right? So we got ad trucks, these huge trucks with our messages, and we drive them right into the heart of the enemy, uh, and, and it's delicious. We had, uh, you know, if you know the CUNY situation, you New Yorkers know, you know, safe, safe CUNY. So the JCRC in New York had a, at its annual gala, they're going to honor the guy at CUNY who could have turned this whole thing around, but didn't, right? So we worked with uh, Jeff Lax and Safe CUNY, and we got our truck, right. you know, the CUNY uh, commencement speech. This woman said, you know, uh, Zionists out of CUNY. So our truck said, jihadis out of CUNY, right? Ingrates, immigrant ingrates out of CUNY. And, um, and it was very effective. It, it got into the New York Post, it got into all the New York press. So we found a way to break through, to make news that, that uh, otherwise would be very, very difficult. Avi, up to you. Yeah, look, uh, I think that uh, we don't, uh, we're not delusional that we can change Jewish leadership quickly. Uh, Jewish leaders, as you all know, are not elected. They're anointed by wealthy donors. And the donors are not holding these leaders accountable for failing to stop the growing hostility. 
So the problem ultimately rests with the donors who permit the situation to continue, where Jewish leaders stay in their position despite failing, all right? How do you measure the success of ADL? ADL is a $100 million budget and anti-Semitism is growing every year. Whatever they're doing isn't working. In any rational business, any rational organization, you'd have to question yourself whether you should continue with the policies that have failed. Well, ADL is just doubling down mostly. They have slowly acknowledged that there's Jew hatred on the left. They're very slow, but fundamentally, they have not accepted the reality of the situation. They have not accepted the reality that the left, which used to be a friend of the Jews, has betrayed the Jews. It's very painful when you are betrayed, if you're a leftist. You, you'd rather be in denial. So the fundamental problem, as we see it with our leaders, is their inability to accept the new reality. Mm -hmm. And they persist in the old habits, which make them feel good about themselves, which is important, and make them acceptable. Jewish leaders are typically part of the elites in the country. They get paid well, they're part of, they, they hobnob with other liberal elites, and they're not gonna jeopardize their status in the community, okay, by doing things which are contrary to the accepted dogma, if you wish. And that's the problem. So fundamentally, it boils down to courage. And that's what makes Mort unique. He's willing to speak the truth and bear the consequences. They are not. Right. All right. So our goal is to some extent is to educate. And we do it locally, by the way. It's very hard to change any national organization. We're small. So we have a dozen, more than a dozen teams around the country. And each one of them is being trained to challenge their local leadership, their local JCRC, the JCC, the rabbis, okay, to get real and to put Jewish safety as the number one priority. Not supporting some minority, that's nice, but it cannot come prior to securing safety of the Jews. And I don't mean just in the institution. It's easy to put a guard in front of a Jewish synagogue but Jews in the streets need to feel safe, all right? We know what's going on in Brooklyn, okay? We know how many people are willing to wear a yarmulke and walk down the street in New York. That's a problem that they're not willing to address. And by the way, as you know, in New York, most uh, people who are arrested for hate crimes against Jews are never punished. And that's the problem. If there are no consequences, it's only going to continue. So we need Jews who are willing to fight, not just seek some compromise, seek some dialogue as a solution to all conflict. And the failure to understand the nature of the conflict, okay, is the major problem. I'm not sure what will make him see the light. I'm sure that some sort of pain will do that. And, and uh, how many more Jews have to be attacked? Do Jews have to be killed for them to wake up that this is a serious problem, that it cannot be business as usual? So the book, again, is an attempt to raise awareness and then mobilize people on a local basis, which is much easier nationally, to take action against their local leaders who fail to protect them. Yeah. Um, just let me say a couple of uh, things about uh, people who write in the book. Uh, we've got a team in... Uh, Carolina, a um, uh, husband and wife team, and they were trying to get their uh, JCRC to uh, to fight against the defamation of Jews that was going on with this program against uh, um, bringing uh, policemen, uh, bringing American policemen to Israel to train them, and of course, and 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 the left was saying, well, this is this is a way that you know, the Israelis can uh, teach American cops to be more racist than ever and beat up uh, and kill black people. So the JCRC didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. And this this group just put pressure on them, pressure on and said, we're going to go there and speak to the city council. And if you're not going to go there, we're going to go there and speak. And we're, you know, they're eloquent. And so they forced the JCRC had no choice but to show up and to say the right things. All right. So um, so pressure can work. 
And we, what we've got, what we train our people to do is to, is to hone in on an issue that most Jews in the community think that the JCRC or the Federation or the ADL should be doing, but aren't doing, and pick that one issue and hone in on it and campaign about it. And then when necessary, send in a truck, send in our truck to, to embarrass, humiliate them, persuade them, convince them, shame them, whatever. So, I mean, that's, this is like little Katusha rockets. This is a guerrilla warfare in, uh, you know, out in the field. And uh, it's, been, it's been quite effective. So I think we, if, Avi, if you want to say anything else, then, then we can open it up for questions. Yeah, I think the only thing is that, look, we recognize this is a long-term battle, okay, uh, as far as Jewish leadership. We recognize that ultimately the donors need to be educated and they need to be pressured, shamed into taking action because the failure of the leadership is a reflection of the donors. And, and, um, and it's a process. It's a process to, to, uh, to educate people and to wake them up. Uh, and that's, that's, that's a big challenge. Right. Okay, Liz. Um, all right. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation. And thank you very much for speaking about telling the truth, because that's actually the title of Mort's chapter, which is that uh, telling the truth is our greatest weapon. So why don't Jewish leaders do that? And, you know, you have to tell the truth about, you know, other sources of anti-Semitism in this country, about the Black Lives Matter anti-Semitism, the Farrakhan, you know, coming from the left. You have to, uh, you know, as, of course, as, as, as well as the right, um, you have to, you know, the neo-Nazis. You have to tell the um, truth about things like pay to slay. I mean, more recently spoke at Columbia University, and many of the students didn't even know about pay to slay. It, it, it's, it's amazing. People people don't even know about this heinous, heinous um, policy of, of the Palestinian Authority that they pay people to murder Jews and about the incitement and how it's punishable by death to send, sell land to a Jew. Um, they, they don't know that the Hamas charter um, calls for the murder of every Jew. Um, basic facts. They don't know that the Palestinian that the Palestinians turned down numerous uh, generous offers um, for a state, and that it's not about a state; it's that they want to wipe out Israel. I mean, these are basic facts that people in the other uh, other uh, Jewish organizations are not saying. Um, and Mark, Mark goes through some of these in his chapter, and he also discusses what is the actual um, uh, way that that the strategy. Um, and there was something, and he talks about this, there was something that came out in 2017 called the the ADL Root Report, by right? the Root Organization and ADL, you know, two left-wing organizations, supposedly telling people how to deal with uh, uh, the uh, anti-Israel, uh, you know, uh, you know, it, it, all the anti-Israel uh, information, misinformation, and so on, and, and instead it was a, um, or delegitimization, it's supposed to be how to deal with delegitimization, and instead they uh, justified the delegitimization in a lot of the report, um, just to read you a couple of items, um, the report uh, justified and portrayed uh, delegitimization assaults against Israel as reactions to, quote, genuine injustices that require change, um, at, unquote, as reactions to, quote, the mistreatment of the indigenous po uh, population, the Arab citizens of Israel, um, end quote, and as react, quote, reactions to Israel's military campaigns in Gaza in 2000, 2012, and 2014. Um, and not surprisingly, Electronic Intifada, which is a horrible anti-Israel uh, website, Gloated, they, they got a hold of this. This is supposed to be a secret report. They didn't send it to ZOA. The way we read it was because because um, electronic intifada somehow got a copy and posted it online. And they were gloating that this is an admission. You know, the, the Jews are admitting that, uh, you know, about all the terrible things that Israel is, is doing. And so th this was their strategy to fi for fighting delegitimization. And um, so then, then they come up with diversion tactics. Oh, that we have to focus efforts on areas where, this is a quote from, from their strategy, we have to focus efforts on areas where their attributes create a unique value proposition in the field. It's just total jargon. 
um, diversion and jargon. That 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 was their that was their strategy, and they were helping the enemies of Israel in this strategy. Um, so you know that chapter discusses that. Um, the issue with the chapter that I did want to mention was that there the uh, publisher uh, had made an error um, and changed uh, what Mort wrote about. Um, a lot of it also discusses the issues with the Biden administration, um, the Biden appointments that you know ZOA has been fighting against, and that other organizations are quiet about. Um, and um, one of the issues was the Lebanon deal, and the publisher changed two or three words, which made it seem like Israel gave up its entire uh, maritime uh, uh, territory to uh, Hezbollah control Lebanon when it was actually the um, all or it was actually all of the territory that that Lebanon had uh, demanded, not everything that exists, but that was bad enough, 330 square miles. Um, in any event, that's being corrected. And so we'll let everybody know when that is corrected. Um, anyway, I um, want to turn it over to have some other, have, turn it over to some other people's questions. I see that Larry Greenberg has his hand up. So we'll call on him first. And, and if you'd like to ask your question live, please put your hand up and, um, or you can, can uh, send us a note in the chat. And we also have some questions in the chat that I'll be, I'll be asking. Uh, Larry, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Larry, un unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself. There we go. No, he didn't do it. Yeah, he Larry, you have to un unmute yourself, please. Hey! There we go. Okay, there you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it, 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 uh, it occurs to me, uh, Charles, um, I stopped contributing to ADL and AJC some years ago, and I'm shocked they didn't close their doors. <laughs> um, well, you're, I, I, you're not you're not a Silicon Valley millionaire, which is where well, they get their money from. This is this is my question to you. Um, I, you know, we have talked before about um, very large Democrat supporters, uh, uh, progressive supporters who are the funder, the major funders of these organizations. Is it possible um, if numerous people, a significant critical mass, stop sending their hundred, two hundred dollar donations to ADL, AJC, all the rest of them, that it will raise attention to the fact that they are not doing the right thing? Uh, all of the other things that we have, that you know, you and I and, and others have have talked about, um, are you know noble grassroots uh, efforts, but the purse strings and the uh, you know, and, and let's liken it here to um, to the uh, primary season that's upon us now. It's not only the amount of dollars; it's the number of supporters that get you to the debate debate stage. Well, I think Can you we know, deal with that. Let me push back a little bit. So first of all, um, I don't think it matters to the ADL if the $50 donors don't give anymore because they're not, they don't need grassroots. They're not running for election. They're, they're anointed by their million gazillion dollar donors. So I don't think that. I think it's more because they have got all the money they will have because of the very wealthy people on the left or anti-Israel people who fund them. Now, I, what I do think works is what we've been doing. And that is shaming and shaming and shaming and spreading the word that they're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. And you might have noticed that, uh, you know, Greenberg, he talks a little bit different recently. And, and I, can, I, I can't prove that we did it, but I think the way the world is going and, the, and all of the criticism that he's getting, not only from Charles and Avi, but all the people in this book and, and more uh, who uh, are intellectually uh, are intellectually prominent people. I think that hurts them more than uh, than we could ever do to to get donors to stop. Now, if you know a huge rich donor who you can get them to stop, that that would be important. Yeah, look, they get so much money from Silicon Valley, many from non-Jewish sources. We're not going to win the money. There's yeah. a lot of progressive billionaires that will keep him funded as long as they maintain sort of a progressive ideology. Can't be George Soros. Just say, so the answer is not money. We're not going to win that battle. The answer is we're doing, you need to shame them. 
Shame is a powerful force on Jews. You need to embarrass them. You need to ridicule them. That's what we think is a better approach and try to stop the funding, which we cannot stop. Yeah, I, I, I think the focusing on issues is important because one of the things that ZOA did is um, ADL initially lobbied against um, anti-BDS uh, laws, which is just horrendous, really shocking. And um, we criticized them. We wrote articles about that. Um, and eventually they quietly stopped that lobbying. Um, so there are some some changes, but you know, over you know, overall there's about 50 things that they have to change in order to to really uh, defend the Jewish people correctly. But we, you know, we a, a change is possible. Some change is possible. Um, Okay, I will ask a question from online and then I will uh, call on Adam Novak who has his hand up. Okay, uh, we have a question here from Barbara. I think that's Barbara Shapiro. Um, oh, actually two questions. Uh, one, why wouldn't American leaders fight for our legitimacy in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria? And two, why do you think no Jewish leader except Moore Klein would touch Vice President Harris's on her, quote, you, your truth must be heard response to the public accusation that Israel is committing ethnic genocide. Avi, go ahead. Well, look, basically, uh, the major Jewish organizations are supportive of the administration. They're supportive of Congress, Democratic Party, and they're not going to say things that undermine the Democratic Party or leftist ideology. That, is, that overrides any benefit that may be derived for the Jewish community. And they can always rationalize it, that uh, it doesn't make much difference, um, and therefore they want to maintain allegiance. Just look what happened recently when Eric Fingerhut, the president of the, uh, National, the Jewish Federation of North America, withdrew his support from an organization called Combat Antisemitism, which is headed by Natan Sharansky. And he did it because he didn't like a video they produced about how wokeism promotes antisemitism. He had to choose between supporting a leftist ideology or the Jewish community. And you know how he chose it. That's the problem. They're conflicted. All right. And, you know, I don't know exactly why he did it, but based on information we received, he was concerned about Democratic congressional support for Israel. And he felt that he had to do that to maintain that kind of support. He's a former congressman. He may have gotten calls from his colleagues, but that's an example of conflicted leadership. We cannot win the battle when our leaders are conflicted or confused about what is their priority. Um, if, if, I, if I may just say something about in regard to the first question, um, unfortunately, you have a lot of organizations on the left that are a big part of the problem in fighting against um, the Jewish rights to Judea and Samaria and Jerusalem. It, it's really outrageous. Uh, as you may know, ZOA um, has a delegation to the World Zionist Congress. There are elections for that every five years. The next one will be in 2025. And um, the reform and uh, the reform organization and um, Ar Arta and the uh, the far left uh, Hatikva slate, which was uh, Amenu and uh, you know like the J Street type of organizations, partners for Progressive Israel. Um, one of their parts of their platform was to divest, which is part of BDS, divest from Judea and Samaria and from places ac across the Green Line. And that when I was in a debate with them. Um, I asked a reform rabbi who was the head, one of the heads of their slate, um, well, what, what if the World Zionist Organization wanted to fund a uh, reform synagogue in Ma'alei Adumim? Would you be in favor of that? And he said, no. In fact, they, they came to us that they, <laughs> in fact, they came to us that they wanted to fund a reform synagogue over the Green Line and we refused it. So this is, you know, it, it's not only that they're not uh, fighting for the le legitimacy of Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, they're fighting against it. And by the way, I hope everyone will vote for us in our slate, which includes uh, uh, Charles's organization in uh, 2025. Um, Adam Novak, please uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Yes, thank you for the detailed briefing. I'm planning to get the book. Um, I, I fully understand the need for harsh criticism. <laughs> But what are you also doing to paint a positive vision 
maybe five years from now, if things were to, to improve, so that so that as we go along this process, we're making sure to not just worsen the divisions between left and right, which you run into in everything in life right now. And so, how are how how are we shepherding you know those that are left of center towards a positive vision um, as we go along? Well, I think what's important is that we're a small organization focused on one mission, which is the failure of Jewish leadership. All right. So what we're trying to do is expose the failure and also make positive suggestions as to what Jewish leaders should do. It's very simple. It's an early stage. Not, not, nothing's going to happen instantly. I think to the extent that we get leaders who understand the crisis that we face, if we get leaders that prioritize Jewish safety above all other concerns, we get leaders who are not conflicted in their mission. They have a fiduciary responsibility to protect the community. Leaders are very important. You cannot win a war without good generals. You cannot be successful company with God lead, without good leadership. We have poor leadership and therefore we cannot win. So our first step is to expose there's a problem there. Now, we also have a 10-point program as to what we think they should do. It's not just to criticize them. Number one, it declare an emergency. This is serious. We have a million emergencies, climate emergency. This is an emergency. What are you waiting for? I'm a child of Holocaust survivor. I know what happened, okay? Jewish leadership failed in Europe and in America. And it's kind of sad to see that the people don't learn. They don't learn. Don't wait. This is getting worse. And it's no reason for it to get better unless you change what you do. All right, so that's yeah. number one. Number two, we know what's important is the next generation. Jewish education has failed to produce strong, proud Jews. Look what happened to these Jews. They're involved in every other cause except Jewish people. So there has to be a change in Jewish education. So if you focus on just those two things, there'll be a big win. I just wanted to say, uh, um, by, by the way, somebody just texted me from this uh, from the webinar. Uh, you don't have to go to Amazon if you hate Amazon to buy this book. You can buy it at Barnes and Noble. I know there's a lot of people who hate Amazon. So, okay, um, Adam, Jewish liberals. Well, I think the most important thing that liberals, not just Jewish, have to understand is that liberalism has been defeated by wokeism right? We are all liberals. Everybody on this call is a classic liberal in the sense that we believe that regardless of race, color, creed, religion, etc., you should have an equal shot, right? But that liberalism is being defeated by this new ideology called progressivism, postmodernism, wokeism, whatever, that demands that, first of all, see society as divided primarily between oppressors and oppressed, right? And that demands equal results, not equal opportunities. So if there's more Jewish lawyers per capita than there are Latino lawyers, the only explanation, this is what our kids are being taught in every school in America, the only explanation is the guys on top screwed the guys and oppressed the people on the bottom. And guess who is, you know, so, so your, uh, your, your uh, prosperity is a sign that you're oppressing people. And guess who are the most prosperous in America? Jews, Asians. So the Jews who used to sit at the table of liberalism with all the other victims, right, got kicked off the table, and now we're part of the oppressors. And the people who took our place on that table, Arab Muslims, right, because they're oppressed. So that's what Jewish liberals have to first understand before they understand anything else. And David Bernstein, the guy who wrote the book on woke anti-Semitism, he is being censored and deplatformed by the Jewish organizations because he wants to come in and explain this to them, right? Which would which would be the first step in getting liberals to understand their own situation and America's situation. And it's Jewish organizations, Jewish leadership organizations that are forbidding the Jews to hear 
his message. It's a brilliant book, by the way, Walk Anti-Semitism. By, by, by the way, we are planning to do a book club on uh, David Bernstein's Walk Anti-Semitism book. Uh, probably, we, I don't think we have a date yet. Um, Alan can correct me if no, I'm wrong. No, it's just but... a quick correction. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but quick correction. We did a, a book club with David already. Oh, we did. Oh, I'm sorry. It's wonderful, and, and you folks can all find it. It's recorded and on our YouTube channel. Oh, oh that's Phenomenal. right. Yeah, that, was, that was one of the yeah. ones Al, Alan hosted. That's correct. That's great. Yep. Yeah. So you can you can go on our YouTube channel and 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 view it. Um, Adam, thank you for your wonderful question. Um, and I'm going to go um, online now to um, Gary Bomzer's question, um, which I'm going to read, and then after that, I'm going to call on Dennis Fleischman online. I mean, uh, uh, live. Okay. Uh, Gary Bomzer asks: After Thursday, uh, Theodor Herzl wrote *The Jewish State*. He went to the Jewish leaders in Germany and France and other European countries to ask for support for the first Zionist Congress. They refused him because it would have jeopardized their new accepted position in their countries. Then he went to Hovavei Zion, um, uh, the uh, Orthodox rabbis in, in Basel, Switzerland, uh, actually invited him, also invited him to uh, have the first Zionist Congress there. And we recently were at the 125th anniversary of that, where they honored more <laughs> because the ZOA was there. <laughs> But go ahead. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the question is, but maybe the analogy between what happened in the past and today. And, um, you know, if uh, Charles well, Lassie would like to say that, that. Sadly, this is a common theme where the established Jewish leaders have conflicting interests and uh, may resist doing the right thing. So Herzl is one example. Jabotinsky went through similar things during World War II. We had Rabbi Stephen Weiss in America. They're conflicted. And the, 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 key, uh, the key element that's present in all of those is courage. Leaders without courage are a disaster. Right. Leadership is, is not a perk. It's a burden. You have to be willing to take the pain to do the right thing. I, mean, I, I just see that Gary Bomser also had a second part of that, which asked the question um, in a separate uh, text. So he said, is there a lesson here? Of course there are lessons. Mm -hmm. There are lessons everywhere. The sad part is we don't learn the lessons or we learn the wrong lessons. Weak leadership will not benefit the community. Not accepting reality, denying reality by some feel-good fantasy will not help the community. And unless okay, we have but... leaders with courage, we will suffer. Very important. Oh, by the way, Jackie just put a link to our um, to the video of our ZOA book club on woke anti-Semitism. Um, it's in the chat for everybody. Um, uh, Dennis Fleischman, you're up next, and please unmute yourself. Oh, thank you very much for taking my question. And uh, first, I'd like to say to uh, Charles and Avi, uh, I have your book, and I read it, and it's a great book. I as I was reading it, I didn't want, I didn't want to end. I want to continue reading. That's, that's how good it is. But, but then you mentioned when I, uh, when you first started that, uh, and more climb, one of his chapters was the best. Uh, what you're saying now it's being edited. So how will I get to edit since I already have the book? We'll send you a copy. We'll send you a copy. There's a, a couple of mistakes that was that were made. We're fixing the mistakes. What, just send Liz uh, your email, and I'll send you the the corrected copy. All right. By the way, hey. so I'm glad you say you didn't want to stop reading it because there'll be a, a volume two. Oh. Uh, there'll be a volume two in in a, in a bit. We're 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 getting people who I'm I'm more interested now in uh, contacting people who have had their own personal struggles with their own local organizations to tell their stories. Because once you, as you know, once you read mm. these things, you get so angry. How could yes. they have done that to these good Jews who just asked them to do the right thing? Oh, go away. You know, we're the experts. Oh, we handle it behind the scenes. Well, what do you know? It's infuriating. So that's, uh, that, so we're putting together another volume. I can't wait for that volume to come out then, Charles. Okay, great. And thank great. you again for writing the book, you and Abby. And thank okay. you for your excellent question, Dennis. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Liz. Um, next, I'm going to read, uh, these are some anonymous questions that Jackie received. Um, okay, one of them is asking, uh, what was the, the tipping point 
for both authors to write this book. And then um, I think this was already answered in your initial presentation, but what was the tipping point for the American Jewish leadership for becoming so weak? Um, well, the tipping point for us, after having fought for 35 years uh, to do the right thing, and after having met, I mean, our lives are blessed because of all the good people that we, you know, that started their own groups, only, you know, only to put, uh, only because the Jewish leadership failed. I mean, all these great people that we met, Mort's number one. I, I, I think the tipping point for us, I think for me, it was the mosque in Boston, in a way. Uh, oh, and the Newton Public Schools. I, I, we discovered through grassroots Jewish activists that the Newton, Newton is a Jewish suburb, right? Leafy Jewish suburb outside of Boston, 12 miles outside of Boston. And in it, they're teaching kids that Jews are murdering Arab women in Israeli jails. They're teaching kids, they, they doctored the Hamas charter to take out the part where it says, you gotta kill every Jew, so that the teachers could say, and this is according to the teacher's lesson plan, you have to make this conflict not about a religious or civilizational conflict, but about borders. Right, so you got to take out the Hamas stuff that says kill all. So that's what they're 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 doctoring their primary sources. They're putting. We went to the JCRC in Boston, and we brought a mother whose kid took all the notes and everything. And the head of the JCRC in Boston told me, you know, after this meeting in my house in my kitchen with the mother, he says, you know, we're going to have to change what we wrote. We wrote that you, you Jacobs and 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 Goldwasser were uh, exaggerating the problem. We're going to now have to, you know, eat some crow, take it back. And well, his board wouldn't let him tell the truth that he knew, right? So I, I that was one of the things that 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 tipped me over. As far as the tipping point for Jews, I mean, Jews have always tried to find a way to get out of the burdens of being Jewish. This is not a new thing. Um, you know, I, I think the tipping point in the history of American Jewry was Abe Foxman's decline to become the ADL for Israel when we were when he was asked by his own people to take on the New York Times, and he said no. So, tipping. Well, point. Uh, for me. I think it was the recognition, number one, that despite all the good efforts by many organizations on campus, uh, the David Project, which Charles and I founded, ZOA, Stand With Us, Camera, Asha Torah, uh, Hasbara, uh, we were losing. And I could, not, I could not see how we could win unless the major Jewish organizations with the resources support the students on campus, the, the students who are abandoned. This is tragic. Think about it, ADL, AJC, the federations abandoned the students on campus, which is why we started the David Project, okay? And they're still not engaged on campus and campus is a disaster for Jewish students. So the fact, the fact that we were losing and we, we couldn't think what else can we do to win unless we get the major Jewish organizations. The other thing was the fact when we speak to these people, and you know, it's it's hard to be critical of neighbors and friends. Charles and I live in Newton. The leaders live in Newton, all right. And you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of heat when you attack Jews or criticize Jews. Okay, but we felt there's no choice unless we get the Jewish community with its resources. And with the genius of the Jewish community focused on protecting Jews, we're going to lose, as opposed to doing everything they do. Go to any federation website, and they list all their activities, and you know what problem they're working on. And it's not the safety of the Jewish community. It's feel-good progressive stuff. Immigrants, abortion rights, trans, gays, they don't feel threatened. Part of the problem is because they're part of the ruling elite, they're the upper class. They don't walk the streets of Brooklyn with the Yarmulke. So we felt we had no choice. As painful as it may be to us personally, and it is. You know, we have friends who attack us for why do you divide the Jewish community? Well, we felt that's, that has to happen. It has to happen. We need to have a change in leadership.
Liz, you're muted. Liz, you're okay. thank you, thank you. Susan Rosenbluth, um, please unmute yourself um, to ask your question. Hi, thank you, and it's wonderful to be here, and Charles and Avi and all of you. Thank you. So I'll call her the vote. Um, my question it has to do, I guess, with <laughs> I, I like to think of myself as a journalist of being, as being solution oriented. Uh, demographically, we know the only group in the Jewish community that is really growing and that still is growing and identifying as, as Jewish is the Orthodox community. And by Orthodox, I mean everything from modern Orthodox with all of its permutations uh, to Haredi. Uh, and these kids are, are 99% of them are in day schools or yeshivas. They're not in public schools. Um, how successful have you been in getting these books, yours and the other ones you've mentioned, into these schools? Uh, and in these schools, the failed organizations have very little power. Um, there's, a, there's some tokenism of, yes, uh, with federation, but federations and ADL, these are, not, these are not organizations that you find the Orthodox Jewish community supporting. I think they'd be wide open to your books. The question is, how do we get these books into the hands of the next generation's leaders, which are our kids? Well, that's a great question. You know, you're right. Um, in the David Project, we were training uh, Jewish students in over 100 day schools in America and in Canada on how to make Israel's case um, before they got so that when they got to campus, you know, they would they, they'd be prepared. Um, again, we are very, very small now. Uh, we have just hired a guy um, who is going to be the, the youth outreach fellow. And one of the things that we're going to put on the top of his list is to go into the Orthodox community and see what we can do in that way. So that's a very, very good question. I, 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 can I, I, I'm, I'd like to make, I'd like to dare, you, you, you guys are the experts, but it seems to me that one of the things we could do is that there could be a, I hate to use fundraising, but there could be a, a real effort to, to pay for getting the books in to the classrooms. The, the teachers, teachers in the Orthodox community love free books. Yeah. If we could get these free books into the hands of the rabbis who are teaching there, they're open to the discussion. They're not going to turn you off on the face of it. There's nothing- Let's have a, let's have a, uh... Let's have a uh, um, a conversation offline, Susan. You and okay. I have to do this. But, I, but I like it. I like it very much. I like it that's very the much. The effort. The effort is let's get our our teachers. Abe Foxman and, and and his successor is even worse. These are not people who are, who have anything to say about what goes on in the day schools. Yeah. Nothing. Federations. Nothing. The kids show up to march in the Israel Day Parade, provided they will do what we need them to do. But they have nothing to say about what we're, what our kids are being taught, and they need your books, the one yours and the others you've mentioned today. We'd love to have your help on that, Susan. Yay! <laughs> and very, very quiet. I, as 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 too many of people that I've written about will tell you, I don't get ulcers. I give them. <laughs> Very feisty. <laughs> Terrific. Um, sis, sis, I, I'd like to just put in a plug for something, too. I mentioned the World Zionist Congress elections. That is an opportunity to affect four major, you know, if you vote in that or if you participate that. And I also wanted to invite people to contact me if you're interested in being on our slate or if you have a group that's interested in being in the ZOA coalition slate in 2025. It's not too early to start thinking about that. Um, please contact me about that. Um, we did uh, much better in, in the 2020 election than previously. And that that is an opportunity to affect for at least four major Jewish organizations because our the election matters for the leadership for those organizations. And those, and those organizations, including the World Zionist Organization, are fund education in the United States. So it, it, that's very important and important that everybody here think about being part of that. And you know, at a minimum, vote and tell your friends to vote when the election happens in 2025 for the ZOA coalition. And thanks for allowing me to uh, make that plug. Liz, uh, may I put your email address in the chat? Sure, sure. 
Um, and then uh, let's see, David Jacobs, um, and we're getting a little bit uh, short in time. So I just I hope you don't mind if I ask you to ask your question uh, fairly quickly. Thanks. I live in Israel, in Judea, and Samaria. Kola Kavod. Kola Kavod. My father is a board member of the ZOA, and we're very active. First, Great. I would like to say that I agree with Susan Rosenbluth a thousand percent, and we have the same exact issue in Israel. And I, I do have an issue with all of the right wing Jewish organizations, including the ZOA. The New Israel Fund has a million dollar office or whatever the amount is in the center of Yerushalayim and in Talpio, Tel Aviv, and none of our organizations have offices in Israel, and they've been giving out stuff, similar books to, to all of these Americans that come to Israel, and the Americans that are in Israel for the year and in the universities, nobody gives them anything. And many of them are involved with nothing because of it. So, I, so, so the ZOA and the other organizations have to work together. I, for myself, are, are willing to invite to, to organize and help subsidize Shabbat homes for these for these kids and and take them around. And 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 many of the Israelis, good people, will whether it's in. M. Tertsu or Rigavim or Bich Hunistan would all be willing to speak to them. That's all not being done. And of course, of course, um, the books need to be given. I'm also writing a book on my father and his Jewish activism, and which includes the things that you have to do in Israel. And there's 500,000 Americans and more than that of, Anglo, of Anglos, English speakers, and nothing is being done and I'd like to have a separate conversation with everybody just to deal with how to deal with the Anglos in Israel. Mort was just in Israel with, with the ZOA leadership group doing an excellent job with um, trying to deal with, with um, Joe and Jill Biden. By the way, Jill Biden is a fundraiser for the NIF, okay? And Joe gets and Joe is a big activist with J Street. So don't be, nobody should be surprised where they're going. So after this call, I'd like to work with everybody and I'll work with anybody to help the Jewish people. I, and I will get them other volunteers to help. Oh, D David, um, please get in touch with me afterwards. And, you know, we'll talk about, you know, all the other additional things we, we can do. And we're actually, I, I don't have actually, we have yeah, actually, I don't have the number in the email. Okay, um, I think somebody put my email in the chat. Yeah. Um, Done. Or, or just if you send it to the info at zoa.org for me, you know, it'll, it'll reach me. Um, and uh, we actually are starting something in Israel, ZOA, uh, friends, uh, ZOA Friends in Israel, because we have a lot of ZOA alums who have made Aliyah. And uh, Kevin, including Kevin Ross, who is our former Philadelphia chair or co-chair. And we will, um, you know, we're, we're putting some, some, some good things together and we'll discuss and see what we can do. Uh, Charles and Avi, do you want to respond? No, I think, uh, listen, <laughs> we're being outgunned, outmaneuvered, outthought, outstrategized, and this is the problem. Um, so yeah, there's no easy solution to this. Mm -hmm. Well, I think our approach is to get people to act locally. It's much easier. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to your neighbors, organize local people, engage with the local leadership. Uh, we've had some great successes where people reach out to the local leadership, engage in dialogue with them, uh, and, and you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. So that's what we urge people to do. Do what you can in your community. Convince your own family, which sometimes is a big challenge, about what's really going on here. Have them recognize the situation that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell you a personal experience. I talked to a head of the of a federation uh, on the West Coast, 
And I just called them up out of the blue because somebody told me that uh, they had an interesting conversation with them. And the guy says to me, I'll have a private conversation with you. And he says, you know, you're right. We're trapped. We, we don't know what to do. And I don't know what to do. So let's, uh, you know, let's, let's keep talking about it. But right now I can't do anything because the people who are, you know, staff is policy, right? So uh, the people who staff all of uh, my organization are uh, progressives or center leftists. So, but it's good to talk to them because the more you talk to them, you know, maybe on the 15th time he hears this again, he'll make a brave move. You don't, you don't know. Relationships are important. Yeah. So it's easy to attack them, but it's more important to engage with them. Buy them the book. I think the Shabbaton idea that David Jacobs mentioned is also very important. And yeah. I know that, um, you know, Fred, actually, when Kevin and I were at the, one of the World Zionist Congresses, um, uh, you know, on, on behalf of a friend who lives in, you know, Kevin now lives in, in uh, Judea and Samaria and Ephrat. Uh, but prior to that, a friend in Ephrat had said, well, look, if there's any, you know, anybody that you think uh, needs a Shabbaton here to see what it, the life is like here, um, please invite them, you know, and I'll have them over. And we did that. Uh, we went over to a guy uh, from Partners for Progressive Israel. And you said, I, I, I don't want to, to cross the green line. But if you can convince them to go, um, you know, it would just be really despicable. Um, but if you can convince people to go, um, they'll see, see that the, this is part of Israel. This is part of the Israeli uh, heartland, that uh, the Jewish communities there are, you know, loving, wonderful people. And, you know, it's, it's an important thing that you mentioned. And, you know, we've tried in our little ways to do that too. But I, I love that idea of Shabbatones and we can do that here in the United States. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, we've all the people who've raised their hands have uh, had a chance to speak. Thank you so much, David. And I uh, want to um, just announce, or Alan, are you there? Maybe you can announce the upcoming uh, book club and other events. Um, and also this, uh, on the 20th, there, we will be sending out an alert about that. Um, there is the sentencing for one of the people involved in, in the anti-Semitic uh, hate crime uh, in New York. And we hope people can show up. Um, last time I showed up, we got had about 35 people there, including the press supporting um, the Jewish victim. And it's very important for the Jewish victim that we show up in court and uh, be there for them. Um, and uh, and also show, show the court that, um, you know, we, we are, it's unacceptable to have a, just a slap in the wrist for somebody who attacks uh, Jewish people. Um, and Alan, could you um, make yeah, any Liz, uh, other announcements? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, first, before I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Charles and Avi, an amazing presentation. Really appreciate it, fellas. Uh, the only book club that I know that you don't, Liz, is that <clears throat> probably in the first week of September, we just haven't zeroed in on a date, we'll be doing a book club with Naomi, I'm sorry. Naomi Linder Khan from Regavim, uh, they've written a book called Bedwistan, talking about the nomadic overrun of the Negev. We'll also be talking about um, uh, illegal building in Area C that's sponsored by the EU. We'll, we'll send out a notice about that as soon as we finalize the date. You won't want to miss it, though. Okay, and then we also have a ZOA book club coming up in two weeks on Obama's true legacy, how he transformed America. Um, uh, featuring the author Jamie Glazoff. He's the host of the Glazoff Gang. A lot of you may be familiar with them. And that's going to be a, a wonderful book club. That's on August 2nd. Um, and the link to sign up to that is in the chat, or we've been also sending it around. Um, oh, okay, we have... Um, oh, okay. Oh, Lin Linda Cohen just uh, put a, a, a question in, in the uh, chat. Um, so when you, we'll make that the last question and then have uh, Avi and and uh, Charles sum up. Okay, she asks, um, showing the map of Israel and how tiny it is is a very important for anyone who thinks we are the aggressors. Right. Correct. I That's agree. And in fact, the Wade's booklet does that. <laughs> right. Right. Avi, okay, and if you have some uh, final words for everybody. Well, again, I think, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Liz, for hosting us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. And I would urge you all to um, speak to your family and neighbors and spread the word. Right, right, right. 
I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you can go and see our work on jewishleadershipproject.org. Um, you can see uh, most of Avi's wonderful films on um, peaceandtolerance.org. And um, we're here with you. We uh, I feel sometimes like I'm an adjunct of ZOA. So uh, <laughs> I know more client for 40 years. Uh, he's a very good, dear personal friend of mine. And I am more than delighted that you have invited us, Liz, to come be uh, on the ZOA program. So thank oh. you. Well, thank you. And I hope you'll come back when you... Um you uh, publish your next book right. and maybe come back again on this one with some of the, the other people who wrote chapters who would we like to do, yes we could do that i mean some of them are actually on this call i know and i want to thank okay. them for their great work yes okay thank you all thank you everybody have a wonderful uh, rest of the summer and see hope to see you in two weeks all the best